Hello stylists, welcome back to the Full Style Inc. channel for another video. My name is Naya and I am the founder and creator of Full Style Inc. Today's video is going to be something fun, something new. I am trying out new things and I will hope to make this a brand new series. So, as you can see by the title and the thumb card, today's video is going to be a fashion style analysis of plus size contestants on RuPaul Drag Race. Starting off with Candy Muse. I myself have been a fan of RuPaul since about 2014, 2015. I have seen all of the U.S. seasons, all of the All-Star seasons, and all of the Canadian Canada seasons. I just got into the U.K. seasons about earlier this year when I started watching RuPaul with my sister. And we are so excited to get involved into the other international series, as well as we have been picking through all of the spinoff shows, such as um, Drag Me to Dinner, Ru Drag Race, Celebrity, Celebrity Drag Race. So much fun. I absolutely love the art of drag. So if you do not know what Drag Race is, let me enlighten you. RuPaul Drag Race is a reality show where a group of talented drag queens put on this impressive competition it's a competition show where they hope to impress the host rupaul rupaul is the world's most famous drag queen standing from the 1980s and 1990s he has built up an entire empire of drag and this show aims to highlight the next drag superstar each episode, the contestants compete in a main and a mini challenge anywhere that anywhere ranging from acting to performing to even a design sewing challenge. And then, of course, my favorite part is a thing one win show followed by a winner of the week where there's a winner who will win either a bonus, a pin, depending on which version of what season you're watching. And then it's also two bottoms who go head to head in a lip sync battle to determine who will stay. I absolutely love, love RuPaul Drag Race. So, let's get into who we'll be talking about today. And that is the Candy Muse. Candy Muse first appears in season 13 of RuPaul Drag Race. And season 13 is stack packed with a bunch of heavy hitters. We have La La Ree, we have Got Milk, we have Unica, we have Candy herself, and then we have the season's winner, Simone. I absolutely love season 13. It is one of my top five seasons. I know I can say that because it's kind of a later season and I wasn't there to follow along with the newer seasons. But season 13 is one of my top favorites. I said one of my top favorites because my other favorite is the season where Bianca Del Rio is in. I think that's season seven. I could be wrong, but not the point. So who is Candy Muse? Candy Muse is an American drag queen and a performer based out of Bronx, New York. Um, she is the runner up of season 13 as well as the recent season of All Stars. She is of Afro Dominican Latino descent. Oh, no, she is of Afro-Dominican origin. She's about the age 28, at least 28 or 29. So the reason why I personally love Candy Muse is loud, proud, brown, and absolutely beautiful. Candy Muse, however, is messy. <laughs> she is one messy queen but i live for the looks i live for the confidence i live for the attitude like truly i feel like there is a candy muse inside of me. the drag queen not the person the drag queen persona lives in me yeah that makes sense so let's get into these looks darling i'm going to analyze some of my favorite looks um I'm going to analyze some looks that really stood out to me and I want to talk about. I'm not going to talk about every episode. I'm not going to talk about every look. There will be top and bottom looks, of course, and with my favorites and some that I'm, eh. And I will also talk about the style references as far as what inspired them, what it came from, and anything that I would do differently as far as styling or even the construction of these garments. Now, these queens in the later seasons have money. The first few seasons of RuPaul Drag Race are a struggle bus because of production value, the queens are having money, and for whatever reason. 
But as we get later into the seasons, you can tell which queens have the money to get these beautiful garments constructed made. And even a lot of these queens are making these garments themselves or they're part of the design creative process, which I love is one of the reasons why I watch RuPaul is because of the creative aspects. And the design challenges, honestly, is one of my favorite challenges. They remind me of the unconventional challenges on Project One Way. But I'm getting, my head up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into these looks. So, when we first meet Candy Muse, it's episode one of season 13, her entry look. This is a very round away, street wear, distressed denim look that I love. This look has this beautiful sweetheart neckline. It's off. It's sweetheart strapless bodice. It has the belted tied um, to bring in extension the waist, and it has this nice little almost tulip hem detail where you get a lot of thigh. Candy Muse love giving the girl some legs. She loves giving legs. She loves giving thigh, and this really does fit her persona. She has these gloveless. Fingerless gloves, these gauntlets on her arms, and she also carried around a matching denim giant boombox. Very reminiscing of the eight, late eight, very reminiscing of the late eighties, nineties streetwear hip hop boombox carrying just look and vibe that is known in Brooklyn and the Bronx, New York. Absolutely love this. This shows her personality and her style reference and who she is right off the back and it is so cute it is very candy muse and also most importantly it's very rough around the edges not because of the fray and edges of the denim but because we can tell that candy is the girl who got all the confidence and the and the vibes but the looks are yet to be elevated and i love where there's room to grow so this very same episode is followed by a mini runway. This season is very different because of COVID and having to film in COVID. They split the first episode up and the group of girls into two different groups, having them battle off in a one-on-one -on -one lip sync battle. And the, the winners went on to the next round where the losers went into the pork chop, where they had one more chance to battle it out to see who was going to stay. But in the end, all of the girls stayed. <laughs> All of the girls stayed. They just had them split up because of COVID, because of the restriction of how many people can be in one area at one time and to have everyone's safety in mind. So this season, they had um, their one ratio, the interest, and then they had like a mini runway show. Usually there's a photo shoot or there's a runway show to start off the queens on the right foot to see what they're bringing to the game before they get into like the challenges. So I'm not going to spend much time talking about this mini runway, but there are two looks. Um, a day to night. Um, they're both red. I don't particularly care for them. Especially the day look. I don't know what that was about. Not really a fan. So I'm going to move on. Episode 3, Runway, Lemonade, You Stay. Uh, wordplay off of Shantae, You Stay. The epic, iconic words that RuPaul says to every winning drag queen of their lip sync battle. Um, so Lemonade is a beautiful, almost metallic, silky like woven fabric that is woven with little threads of metallics and silvers and golds and any other color that dyed and is woven in together and it creates this beautiful shiny silky material. Um, it's a beautiful fabric, it's a beautiful fabric, but it's kind of difficult to work with. But if you know what you're doing, you create some beautiful either structural pieces or nice flowy drape pieces. So we get to see a lovely range of scale done in, with this fabric on the runway. And for me, the seamstress, the fashion girl, I'm so happy to see that. But however, Kenny Muse hits the ground running with this cute little 1960s go-go yeah, this 1960s go-go Austin Powers almost dancer little night set. She has the cute little bralette with the high-waisted panty and this cute little um, necklace robe tie. It's so very cute, so very girly, so very sexy. And you can tell that she's really feeling herself and it's just add a little sparkling to the runway. Base, be, definitely like a femme bot James Bond girl come to bed dolly. Like it's so cute. Episode four category is Train for Days. And candies give us a old Hollywood glamour in this dark, rich velvet. Um, in this dark, rich velvet gown. 
not gonna lie again not one of my favorite looks um the construction of it's kind of funny wonky i think actually michelle dings her on this because the side splits are so high and that fabric is like pinched or ruched up that you can see her panties underneath you can see like the black of her panties or tights or something you can see something and it kind of distracts you and pulls you out of the fantasy of the look so i don't something i would have done constructively differently i would have had the fabric just draped naturally and had those slits built in versus having the fabric just stop so abruptly on the sides to create that leg out split action because it you causes you to see what's underneath and you don't want to see what's underneath you want to you want to be fully immersed into the fantasy so episode five it's a ball in the history of drag races in the history of just uh, everything a ball is an event of the season is an event of the week of the year people plan weeks days months in advance for a ball this thing ball is a bag ball love a bag ball so this ball has three different categories where the queen has to walk one of the categories being a design sewing challenge using unconventional materials where they're giving various of different type of balls i'm not so balls where they're getting in various type of bags to create different create their garments sleeping bags gift bags shopping bags backpacks purses all type of bags they're giving and they're just they're i cannot remember if this season they get to pick what bag they want or there is just like a snatch and grab because sometimes there's the winner of last seat the last episode who gets to select which queen get what um which color which box with bag or da 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 or there's like a snatch and grab where rupaul says go and they go and grab a bunch of stuff and they try to grab the same of everything or something they have their eye on but there's different type of bags and so bef but i'm getting ahead of myself once again so first up is mixed bags well she comes out in this very cute latex form feeling uh, uh, i believe that it's either a lacquer or a latex um musician inspired look where it has like a um a bunny across the front she has like a velvet black bag that has full of tricks because she's a musician and there's even um there's reveals on top of reveals within the bag and in the bag itself is thrown the bag itself creates a nice little cape with a sequence lining at the end next up is miss money bags this is as you notice miss bunny bags this look is very much she was a former street worker but now she owns the street like she's about her money she has the hair pent up in a money constructed like turban wig and she's smoking a big fat cigar that's money because she now she got some money to burn and she looked like she would put you to work and get what she needs to get and get it done Next up is their sewing design challenge look. And Candy selected or was gifted all of the backpacks. This is a very cute, fun look. It has a cute little bralette made out of the backpacks and a nice little um, flared like skirt, mini skirt made out of the backpacks. And she has this cute little wig with all these little bobbles in her hair that is so very cute, so very early, not late 90s, early 2000s streetwear look. Um, I really like this look. I'm more of a fan of the wig than I am the look. There are some construction issues. There are some fit issues. But it is an unconventional challenge. Material challenge. Candy is not a seamstress. So we're going to let her pass. And there are other looks on this runway. If anybody, if any of you guys are a fan of RuPaul, you know I'm talking about the infamous gift bag look made by Miss Lala Reed. Who I love dearly, but baby darling, what was you thinking? Um, I like this look. She plays the whole persona where she's like the mean girl, but she's not like the bully. She's the girl that beat up the bullies. She beats, she bullies the bullies and like she'll beat them up and take their lunch money. Like me, me, I said, like you want to mess with, you know, little Tommy, I'm about to rock you. You know what I'm saying? So I, that's cute. That actually fits her personality. Moving on. Episode six category is little black dress and this is one of my favorite looks honestly this is one of my favorite looks because it's so thoughtful it's so just a, a, a higher interpretation of an already iconic thing an iconic dress iconic look 
So, the theme was Little Black Dress. Well, you can imagine most people came out wearing a cute little black dress. But there were some people that made it a little bit more campy, a little bit more awestruck. Like, the possibilities were endless with this category. Candy, however, comes out in a canvas painted dress that has the print of Princess Diana revenge dress on it. This dress, the Princess Diana dress, was originally designed by Christian, um, I cannot say this name, so I'm going to leave it right here. And this is an inspired look of that dress. So she has like the canvas as if it was sketched out and she's a sketch to life. She takes this ideal of this sketch and painted look onto her body where she slicks back her hair and oil. She has like the black ink paint all over her face and hair and even down her arms. And she's holding a little foam brush. Now, she gets dinged for the makeup and hair as a distraction. And I would have to agree. Where I would have done, I would have either had an actual paintbrush, okay, or like a pen and had it like it was sketch marks. And I would only had the ink and paint on my hands, on my hands and my arms, not all over my face. But the look itself looks as if she's this sketch, this drawing come to life. Taking the idea of the little black dress, this beautiful form printing dress on the small, beautiful, gorgeous woman that was, is Princess Di and putting it on this plus size body in this shape and form honestly is iconic. I love it for the fashion reference alone. However, like I said, she was deemed for um, not only the challenge, but a few of the style choices in the look. So she ended up in the bottom two where she had to lip sync against Tanisha and she sent Tanisha home. Episode number seven category is Beat It. Like Michael Jackson beat it, but beat it. <laughs> so cute. This look. <sighs> this look with the diamonds with the crystals with the pearls that are almost hung they're hung on strings hanging from not only the hat but the actual garment that kind of like just drapes and drops down her body screams screams classy old money decadence I absolutely love this look. This is one of my favorite looks. It really shows a elevated old Hollywood glamour, almost almost Marilyn Monroe-esque of Candy style, where she can give you that duality of the streetwear rough and tough look, but the sexiness and the decadence of this old Hollywood glamour look, the way that these beads and diamonds hang and drape and they are different lengths so it gives you um dimension and depth and texture it's absolutely amazing and i love that she paired it with this fur um stole this giant fur stole that almost wraps around her body leaving um areas where there's exposed skin such as the breast such as the arms such as the leg that gives you sexy but not giving you too much like it's not overly sexy and i absolutely love this look i love the hat i would love to see candy and more looks like this but i guess with the challenge it it definitely was given what needed to be gave also Shout out to Olivia Lux, another um, brown um, queen on this season who gave the very, uh, I want to say she borrowed candy wig. She had this little cute little bobble wig uh, with the little bobbles and the barrettes that we used to wear in our hair. But she was giving a very um, late uh, 80s, 90s punky Brewster on the street girl type of look with the little bobbles and bubbles in the hair, the little beads. So that was very, very cute. Again. Nothing to do with this video, but I just had to mention it because it was cute. I loved it. Episode 8. I say I have a lot of favorites, but I am going to put this in, um, I'm going to say the top 12. It's not top 10, it's top 12. This week's category was Yellow Gorgeous. Another cute little wordplay. Candy's interpretation of this theme was dressing um, was a look inspired by Beyonce's Lemonade look. You know, the video where she's with the bat and she's smashing up shit. That look. Absolutely love this look. I definitely will put it in my top 12. However, this look, Candy's interpretation of this look, is not, it's Beyonce attending Coachella, not performing at Coachella. 
she has these beautiful sunflower pins or clips in her long hair as well as the beautiful stone glowy makeup as if like i said she was an attendant of coachella fitting into the aesthetic and the vibes of you know coachella's cultural appropriation but <laughs> with a twist as beyonce lemonade this is something i can see actually being worn when beyonce um, performed in coachella in 2018 was that out did that album come out before or after i can't remember it came out before dang you could tell that i am not a beehive i am i'm not a i am not a beehive so i'm gonna move on skipping episode 10 going on to episode 11 we have the makeover challenge so cute one of my favorite episodes of the rupaul drag race series is the makeover challenges where they make over anyone from their own family members to the part of the crew that films um i believe the uk version did their um the queen, the queen mothers, the queen moms, the women that watch and over them, make sure they eat, make sure they good, make doo -doo. and then I think one season they did the actual like camera crew, sound crew is really really funny. This season, because of COVID and the shutdown, and restriction, everything, they did not invite anyone in for them to um, make over. And again, this is one of the first season where there was no live audience when they have like their little stand ups or their roast or their little variety specials. So the queens had to make over each other so they got paired off um i believe it was at this point i don't know how many it was i'll put the number here at this point they got paired off with each other and candy got paired with got 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 milk i love got milk i love got milk's aesthetic it's not something i personally would draw to but got milk style and aesthetic and got milk story is also very inspiring and very beautiful so this one was one of my favorite episodes and one of my favorite challenges within the season because of the dynamics of it candy muse and got milk are two different persons not only that's that's part of the challenge but also they're two different body types they cannot shop each other's closet as some of the other girls do and when i mean they're two different body types got milk is short petite Candy Muse is tall, stocky, kind of husky. And so they literally had to deconstruct their clothing. Got Milk had to take stuff apart and add different panels to it. And uh, Candy had to literally fit Got Milk into this um, leotard bodysuit that Got Milk was supposed to wear that was a representative of what Candy's drag. And she had to bring it in significantly. But they were in the top this week. And I absolutely love it because they really really turned it out and did a good job candy was in this cute little renaissance court jester look with this black and white giving i'm at the fair i'm a high-end jester like the queen can't kill me because if you do the the, the king the king that i came from was seek war like it, it was giving it was a story she was feeling herself she was looking she definitely really did embody got milk and of course that same instance was pushed onto got milk to embody Kenny Muse with all of the flavor and the style and the persona like you know like she's gonna beat somebody up she was giving them like you know I'm here this is what you get that you got I absolutely love this week so like yes this look was very court jester very clown like not like a normal clown like a high-end fashion clown with a corset a ruffle collar and giving the girl some go we're skipping 12 and 13 I'm gonna briefly talk about episode 14 episode 14 I believe was another design challenge but i could be wrong but it the the category of this episode was halt pockets cute concept bad look she was dinged for it definitely was in the bottom i never want to mention it again episode 15 wait hold on i'm getting caught up episode 15 is the semi-finals love the semi-finals cute great looks all around the category is drax excellence now Usually the semifinals is one where the queens get their last final hit off. They get their last final lick before the fans get to vote and before they go into the finals. And there's a lip sync. There's some other things. And then, you know, the crown is given. <sighs> Candy chose to be Candy. And I love that for her. I love that Candy chose to be Candy. But Candy Girl, couldn't you give us a little something? She wore... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to look at my notes. 
she wore this um cute little mesh structured almost judy jackson um hair and fitted corset dress with the like the structured shoulder and the sleeve it was cute but it was very lackluster compared to other finale season finale dresses other queens that was wearing it was very cute it was it was very candy very futuristic very you know there was leg that was fun that was flaky that was perfectness to it but and she can't even say i don't do gowns and i'm like candy you killing a gown that red look that velvet red look that wasn't quite right was a gown look and she ate she ate she could have did another type of, like, not version, but a, the same family, the same vibe as the beaded, dripping in diamonds look for the semifinals. So, not a fan of this look. I really wish Candy would have pushed the box for this, but it is what it is. Now, the grand finale, episode 15. No, episode 16. This is the grand finale. It's a ball. It is, it's all, is this is it. This is where everything happens. This is the last time you got to show your looks, to show your drag, who you are, the last time to impress RuPaul and lip sync for your life. So, the queens have, this a ball, they have three different categories. First category is black and white. And honestly, this look from Candy is very high fashion, but with a message. Very high fashion, almost Cruella DeVille-esque with the hair, um, however, I love the fact that she kept it socially conscious because during this time, this was during COVID, the shutdown, as well as during the Black Lives Matter protests. And in her dress, in the sequence, with the black sequence, you can see the letters BLM being spelt out and put into the intentionality and the design of the dress and the gown. And it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. It, it makes me happy for several reasons and I know you guys know why those seven reasons makes me happy because honestly this is a gorgeous gorgeous dress it is an elevated look of signature candy and I love that she's into gowns and she understands how she can still give sexy she can still get fun she can still give the people some go in an elegant gown I love that for her look number two is all over red this is the elevated look of her throwback entrance look Meaning, she has a cute little boom box. <laughs> She's a girl on the street. She has a streetwear style look. But it's like a wet, red, it's like a, a red leather bustier um, strapless bodice. She has some cute little headphones. And it's a very Versace type of vibe with the the ringlets, the rings, the, the cutouts, the, the grommets. Um, it's very tough in look, but it's a very elevated look of her first look. Well, that was denim. That was very rough around the edges. This is more clean polished elevated look definitely streetwear definitely i can see versace making something like this back in the 90s 100 percent. lastly her grand finale look um and this category is grand finale extravaganza <laughs> sorry grand finale eleganza extravaganza absolutely love the extraness of this all of all of this this one is a artistic interpretation of the essence of a peacock okay they're strong they're powerful however for me not one of my favorites it looks kind of crafty there's something about it that's too much and i don't know what it is i don't know if it's the hairpiece because i don't think separately i like the hairpiece i don't i don't know if it's too much rough or structure going on the dress but it kind of just it and there's a hoop skirt underneath so the dress kind of it kind of sways instead of like drapes and fall it's something about it that's too much it's something about it i feel like we went too far over with the gowns we went too far over we need to come back that, but that's just my opinion um she looks amazing it's just something about it that kind of skewed and it's too much it's a bit too much maybe in the construction something because i like the idea of the peacock i i, I love where she was going i love where the designer or whoever it was going it just it, they went too far i need to bring it back come on back so stylers we have so if you know i hope this i should have probably started off spoiler alert spoilers um candy goes on to become second runner up in this season with our runner simone um uh, however she turns it out with two great looks for the lip sync and as well as lip sync performances 
However, that is not all we get to see of Miss Candy Muse because in season eight of the All Star season, she makes a comeback and a return. And I'm so very excited. I was so excited when I seen Candy Muse turn that corner. So, starting off, episode one, entry, absolutely fun. Flirty, girly, just giving shoulder, giving leg as Candy does. This is definitely an elevated look from her first appearance, her first interest, and but it still signifies and represents candy. Absolutely love it. There's runway challenges. There's a runway challenge for their um, main challenge before the actual runway. So this is again what we see the queen's looks. We see what they're bringing. We see who, who how they interpret a challenge. Um, some seasons there's a photo shoot. Some seasons there's something else. But mostly there's a runway or the photo shoot. So this look, this season, we got um, a famous then, famous now. For her first look, famous then, is a interpretation or a recreation of the iconic RuPaul look from Supermodel of the World, their You Better Work video that was released in 1993. Iconic look. Definitely have it all the way down. Come on, Candy did the high-low very high in the front and low in the back. But the signature hair, the the hot pink gloves with the with the bracelets, so cute, so iconic. It's definitely a very good look. And RuPaul was entirely entertained by that. And again, the purpose of this competition is to impress RuPaul. The second look, um, I believe um, the, the category was famous now so it was famous then famous now and i believe she was giving megan the stallion Me Me megan the stallion maybe Nicki minaj i don't know the specific style reference who this for i don't know the style reference i could not find any style reference to lead me to what this who this person is Maybe they just like the quintessential like celebrity influencer type person model type thing and it's not a particular person it's just a um, a general ideal of you know this the fashion and looks now I don't know I, I I couldn't find it and I rewatched the episode and still didn't understand what was happening and then the final runway runway the category was famous forever um this look is a very monochromatic fiery red look and this almost armor type of latex no armor type of corset bodysuit with all of these structural details i t uh, added to it it's very glam the hair is up and has rhinestone to it for me it gives me almost like a fifth element reference which is crazy because fifth element was referenced a lot this season i think kimura had a fifth element rest a reference Heidi and Closet had a fifth element reference. So I don't know if this reference was another reference off the Jeremy Scott 2018 show, but definitely, um, definitely it reminds me of a fifth element reference. Um, for me, I thought of when I looked at this, the, for me, the category was supposed to be interpreted as a timeless signature drag. I wouldn't put this as a timeless signature drag. However, it is a candy look. She's giving leg. She's in a corset and bodysuit. Um, that's her thing. And I love that for her. I love this look. I just couldn't find exactly what reference was this from. But it's a very, it's a very strong look. I wouldn't put it in none of my list, but it was, it's a very good look. Episode 2 category is Net Gala, which is so cute to play off of Met Gala, but it's Net Gala like Mini. Which, with Net, that's again, that's a fabric and material that comes in a, a variety of range that you can really play with. There's tool, there's actual netting, there's mesh. So there's, there's, a, there's a range of the way this fabric is being used, this concept and fabric is being used on the runway. Some people take it more literally, like with netting. So you have people who are like, have butterflies and they catch butterflies in like a net and then you have somebody like Jimbo who took net and her like internet and went a whole nother direction I love how something like this can be interpreted so however with Candy Candy gave us a Balenciaga a Kim Kardashian reinterpretation inspired by look she has the hot pink the very hot pew pew pink that has been trendy in fashion for like the past 
year or two um bodysuit form fitting bodysuit but she paired it with like this tool constructed apparatus that comes from her body that has these long strands and paints and on the tool like the flat surface of the tool as it constructed across her chest and her body um is a drawn out i don't know i don't know what if it's used out in paints or used with thread drawn out image of her face it is a look it's a vibe and I, 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 I fucks with it. You know, I don't, I don't really care for the reference, but I fucks with it. Like I, this look is so beautiful. Definitely a drag interpretation of that, um, Balenciaga, it, Kim Kardashian in a Balenciaga look, but with the tool and the net. It's, it's very iconic. I honestly like it. I, I gotta put it in my top 10. I got to because it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Episode three is a supermarket ball. No, not the 2015 Chanel fashion show that was inspired by the supermarket. Yep, 2015 fall winter fashion show. This one is, again, another unconventional design challenge. There's three different categories. And the third category is using something they make. So. Uh, first up is Legendary Queens. Get it? Legendary, like dairy. And the, gr the girls, the queens, range it from all type of interpretation of this look. But Candy gave us another almost lacquered structure um, bodysuit. She loves a good bodysuit. That has like this apparatus structure almost coming off her body. It's giving me very Scabarelli. And how Scabarelli really loves to play with the human form and adding things to it, whether it's flowers, animals, da 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 da. You know. And it's very um, giving us a 3D form. She says that it's a more of a spilt milk. I like to think of it as like this. As if she gracefully tipped back and fell into a bowl of milk and in that pose in that moment the camera was flashed as the milk splashes up around her i absolutely it's so good it's so good it's so good it's good it's in my top 10 it's in there because it's so the the, the structure the idea the idea the concept is very high fashion i can see this walking a hawk to a fashion show i can see scabarelli taking this theme and this ideal and running with it it's so good okay so so next category is fruity patootie um, Candy comes out as this cute little cherry bomb, very sexy, again, a very high, um, very high glamour version of like a pinup burlesque, burlesque dancer, burlesque, yeah, a burlesque dancer, which I feel like is a very signature, I don't know if she realized this, but a pinup burlesque dancer is kind of like Candy's drag, like I feel like that's where, that's where that is, I can connect several looks where she has this pinup almost, you know, burlesque dancer. And this is that look. It's very hot pink. It's, it's very, not hot pink. It's very red. It's very fire. It's very sexy. I absolutely love this. Last look is their supermodel, supermarket, mo supermodel look. And it's a design challenge. I cannot remember if, again, she chose this fabric, was given this fabric, or was a snatch and grab. However, it's a very futuristic, oh, excuse me, it's a very futuristic fifth element look. She used foil and the fire blankets, like the blankets that they give you when you're cold or hot, the firemen and they cover you with it whatever she used those materials so it's very metallically foil um she has a structured bodice which i don't know how she made that that looks amazing probably use some type of form or cardboard to put the foil and stuff all over it and she has this cool geometric shape with it and then she has this cute little flowy type of skirt that kind of flows and flows in the wind as if it's like golf silver foil sheets um that kind of just flap around and it's very cute very high fashion she's always giving legs she's always giving legs like it's given very full high fashion but not like the creepy where you know you put a, a hat on your head so the aliens can't hear you tin hat high fashion episode four category is as as the world's turn again love these 
wordplay and these themes the producer the writers whoever is very clever in these concepts and these themes for these categories so as the world turns candy comes out in one of my top five this is one of my top five because this speaks to me on a a, a personal level as a child and it shouldn't but i this i was into anime when i was a kid so i'm still into anime so like i, I saw this she gives us a latex inflatable bot cat suit that has these literal, literal life saving flotation devices on the front and the back. It goes up into the hair with these two pigtails. She's, she's given us a very Japanese anime, um, sexy, quirky, um, femme bot pleasure doll. Okay. I love the silhouette. I love the look, I love the color, I love the makeup that she's pairs with it. It's absolutely iconic. One of my favorites. I will put it in the top five Candy Muse look. It's one of my favorites. So, episode five is Reveal Yourself. Reveal, okay? Reveal Yourself, which is an ideal of having reveals and having surprise elements to your garments so most of the times queens have multiple layers on or they have a concept and it kind of develops and evolves over time there's a bit of storytelling into it and i'm here for it i love it each and every time it gets me i'm like oh yes um when it's done right it's not always done right when it's done right. i ain't gonna say it's not always done right that's okay that's shady when it's done right so reveal look um, first look is this cute little 1950s, um, classic housewife dress with the cute little poof skirt silhouette and a nice little apron. It's kind of different, it's kind of different, a different look for Candy. Um, this is, this look is signified of other queens literally on that season, but it's nice that she came out with something different so that she gave us room to evolve and develop it. So, silhouette dress with an apron. Love the silhouette, love the dress with the cute little apron, nice different housewives, and then she transforms, she takes that off and has a transformation moment where she spins and spins and spins and she has this long, beautiful red gown. Now, the red gown for me, completely left field. Don't know where that came from. What is going on? And the look of the red gown is not even a red gown that would fit in that time frame. It's not even a red gown that would have been worn on a red carpet at a moment you know like it, it it's 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 different it's a different look it's a gorgeous gown just a different look but i love the reveal and then finally after that the third look is this beautiful metallic almost metal looking lingerie number that kind of completes the whole trifecta and it takes you back it has a cute little garter bell it takes you back to the bedroom so at first she's a cute little housewife she can do dinner and then y'all go out to end you'll go out to eat and she's giving you looks she give you go and like oh my god she looks so sexy like oh my god that's my wife da, da, da. and then when you get back home she strips off and like bam let me take you to bed i get it i understand it i just don't know the third look fit the, the second look fits in between it's kind of a paired against the first one and this last one it's kind of weird but moving on who am i who am I? Who who asked me? I don't know. Nobody. But I'm making this video, so. So, episode six. Category is A Night of a Thousand Grace Jones. Now, as a fan of Grace Jones, as a black woman and a fan of Grace Jones, I loved this look. And I was interested to see what other people was going to do with this Grace Jones interpretation. Especially some other, you know, non. But everyone did a good job. Even though... My girl, James Mansfield, got eliminated, got deans for her look and eliminated, even though we all know Kahana should have went home. I like the James look. Did it need work? Yes. The construction could have used work, but it was a cute look. Okay. So, they think, so anywho, we, this is not about any other queen. This is about candy, but I have words. These are my opinions. I'm sharing them. I'm not, I'm not on Twitter no more, so like, here I am. Um, this is a recreation of Grace Jones' maternity dress that was designed by uh, John Paul Gaultier, who she was in a relationship with or had an affair with, or like, who was with at the time. At this time, this was her maternity dress because she was pregnant with their child at this time. And John Paul Gaultier and another 
designer, whoever, helped collaborate and create looks for Grace Jones to wear to all of her um, gigs and events while she was pregnant. This dress was designed to not only hide the pregnancy, but also to celebrate it. So it has this beautiful, bright pop art um, geometrical shapes coming off of it. And, and this very structural, fun, almost post, um, a postmodern historical reference to it. And I really love, and it's paired with a big, big old explanation point at the, exclamation mark at the top of the head. So Candy's look is the look and body in itself. But instead of a long black dress, it's a, co of course, a short cute mini dress. And instead of the big exclamation mark, there's a big old K at the top with that period mark at the end so it's a play off of what grace jones look was but for candy muse again i love a the theme i love girls i love when girls hit the theme understand the assignment and take their own interpretation of it as well as i love when sometimes you can piggyback it off to a fashion reference an actual historical fashion reference i love that that is so good ah that's so good episode seven episode seven was miss fill in the blanks now not going to lie not one of my favorite looks this look she went as miss arrogant if you don't know from season 13 seasons past she in her confessions or when she was arguing with someone if someone calls her arrogant and she was like well if i'm arrogant let me be arrogant like <laughs> candy's a very no nonsense i don't care i'm gonna be me so type of girl and she if she wants to be arrogant go ahead be arrogant so this look was that her she won the crown for miss arrogant what i like about this look is the hair this 3D structural tower defining gravity hair that is very reminiscent of the 90s black hair shows that used to dominate the East Coast and even a bit of the Midwest. I went to one or two of them in the 90s and they used to have these astronomical crazy hair shows to just show off the skill and technique of these black hair stylists. That look is that not a fan that hair is that that wig is that not a fan of the look and i'm gonna move on episode eight episode eight category is i'm the winner baby and the queens were giving um boxes that were that had material and fabric inspired by former winners of drag queen former um actual all-star winners of drag queen of drag race and lala reed was in charge of selecting which queen get which box and candy was giving monet exchange now monet exchange is one of my favorite drag queens she's one of my favorite i want to add her to this list she's not really plus size plus size she's more of a slim thick girl but she's going to get added to this list because i love her fashion i love her style and i'm adding her to this list She's a black queen, so I'm here for it. Anywho, Candy was giving Monet exchange. Now, if you are familiar with drag and you're familiar with Monet, you know Monet. Look, however, I know I, I, Candy struggled with this. Again, she's not a seamstress; she doesn't sew, but she's had she's held her own when it came to construction and turning out a look. However, this is not really the case. She has so much fabric and stuff to choose from. She ended up choosing this like black embossed leather, vinyl faux leather material. And she made like a simple, literally a simple black dress. And it was very underwhelming. And she came out with like a sponge when she was dabbing herself. Because again, Monet Exchange is known for the sponge dress. That she literally recreated when she was on All Stars. <laughs> to elevate the look so she's known for the sponges and there were sponges in the box um instead of playing off of that she she made this little black dress and the black dress is not really it's not the best construction it has this awkward length um again she loves a little leg the, the split is kind of you know it's there and the neckline is too high up and it doesn't it, it should have it should have gave something to add it's very i don't want to say majorly but it's it's is mm -mm. and it doesn't scream and also this look doesn't scream monet it doesn't scream monet or candy it it doesn't seem to fit any of those two queens and that was the challenge um it was taking these queens vibe and um fabric choices and and cr and creating your type of drag with it and it just it doesn't seem to fit so episode nine category is Snow Bunny. And I love 
this um, category and I love how all the different queens interpreted interp interpreted it interp mm -mm, whatever Candy comes out in this cute little number that makes you think, do you get cold while you skiing? Because if you do, that look is not going to work. So Candy's look is very reminiscent of a, a rocker chick that is perform performing at the ski resort. If there was like a festival or a ski lodge and there's an event, she's performing there, but she's not actually skiing. She's not on the slopes. She's not. She's not. She has this cute little stoned out three-piece set, this cute little bralette with a cute little garter corset waist belt happening with a bikini string thong happening. Um, it's very cute, very fun, very playful. And she pairs that with a with some stoned out moon boots that Michelle complimented on her because Michelle has a thing about wearing flats and boots and you gotta wear a heel. She got she got like heel. Um, me and her would be fighting because I'll be in platforms all day. Anywho, um, uh, she the stoned out boots and she tops it with this white la oversized large fur fur jacket. Love the fur jacket. Love the look. Like I said, this girl is not skiing. She's not putting on skis on. She's going from the cabin that she's living in to the stage that she's performing on. Or she's going from that to the hot tub. Like she's not on the skis this girl doesn't ski she doesn't like to get cold but she's gonna give you a look as if she's out there living her life but i don't know how you can in a, a bikini but it's so very cute one of my favorite looks truly i would put it in top 12 moving on moving on moving on episode 10 is another makeover challenge this makeover challenge is very sweet very endearing they got to make over some lesbian queens who are super fans of the show and each one has a it, I, I believe at this point it's a top three so three of the queens and so it's three and um it's a makeover challenge their drag queen their lesbians range from different type of um personas and identify candy gets paired with more of a butch queen and one of the queens she shares with candy that she all her life, she's had to fight with people trying to make her um, feminine, and she's not really feminine. She doesn't identify with that. And the last time she wore heels, and when she was trying to be, she was trying to be straight. Like she was pretending to be straight, and she went to prom and homecoming. It's a very funny story, and uh, you can tell that she's very nervous and very scared when they go out on the runway to practice their look and what they was gonna do and walking in heels. Like at one point, she wouldn't let go of Candy arm. Candy like, okay, you gotta let go because like. We can't do this holding hand. We can't. We can't do this holding on to each other. But at the end, they turn it out. So Candy is. I can't remember the actual lady's name. Um, however, her drag name is Cookie Muse, which is so very cute. Cookie with a K, and Cookie Muse is so cute, so adorable. She's feeling it. She's into it. By the time she hit that runway, you can't tell that she was nervous. You can't tell that she wasn't in touch with her feminine side. You can't tell that she didn't know how to walk in heels. She was the giving the girls what they needed to go. So they have this cute little again, very go go 1960s um pop mod look in this pastel color palette. They they're seeing the streets and they're partying in the club of London on um, the 1960 Londons. I actually love it. They have the beehive ponytails topped with a bow. It's so very cute and again so very Candy Muse. Candy Muse. It's not like the 1960s, 1950s housewife, 1940s housewife, because there's other queens who have that essence, but she can give you a cute little 1960s go-go vibe, like Austin Powers, like James Bond, a Bond girl type thing. She could give you that. She could give you that, and I feel like she could tap into that more iconic, knock it out the park. I would love to see a big girl, a big brown girl, show that out, okay? Whether drag queen, whether a, a woman, I, I would love to see that. Maybe I should do it. I don't know. So, moving on to episode 11. We're almost done, stylers. <laughs> moving on to episode 11. We have um, the variety show. So, there's not really specials this week. This is the variety show. This season, they had the fame games where the eliminated queens can compete alongside the other eliminated queens um, have the fans vote for their looks and which looks they like that they would have worn that runway if they had not been eliminated in order to win a prize of $50,000. So there was two wins, two ways to win this season. 
And uh, this episode was a variety show where all the queens came back, performed their own little special variety acts. So there was singing, there was dancing, there was comedy stand-up moments. And, um, and a chance to be in the top two to lip sync against the two the, the top two lip sync and get their chances to spin a wheel to upsell how many um more votes they get so you can double your votes by two three and five um at the top was lala reed and james matthew because they were robbed i'm so glad that they were in the top two and i'm so glad that rue both get, gave them both the chance to get that like they both won so they both got to spin a wheel because they were robbed they were robbed. And honestly, I'm so glad they had the opportunity because if Heidi in the closet had not left the competition and and they're so forfeiting her chance to compete in the fame games, she would have ate them hoes up because she has the most <laughs> followers out of all of them. <laughs> she was one of the most famous queens on this season. So, I, uh, so yeah, um, I'm so glad that Lala Reed and... Uh, James Matthews got that chance and I'm so happy that Lala Ree won. I love Lala Ree. But anywho, this is about Candy. It's not a video about Lala. Let's get it. So Candy uh comes out in this cute little sequence jumpsuit. They have these cute little cutouts on the shoulder and the legs. She has this cute little wide, large, wide brand hat. Love the look. So good. Asymmetrical drama looking like a, a, a delicious banana. I'm here for it. The grand finale, episode 12. We're almost there, Salars. I promise you, if you have been holding on this long, I love you. You know that. So, episode 12, there, um, they was to perform original song. And I love the original song. I love Candy. Got to feel her pop star um, vibe. And she's dancing. Man, not throwing money at her. Like, she's feeling it. She even gets picked up and lifted. And as a big girl, I'm like, yes, I love that for you. I love that you got lifted up. In the air. I love that. That's amazing. I mean, like, there are lifts and tricks. She get to, you know, her pop star fantasy. Like, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind that. I don't know who would do it, but I wouldn't mind a chance to have the opportunity to try. Final runway. Category is... Sorry. <laughs> category is Final Fabulous Yellow. Candy is in... And I and people say this often about melanated people. Yellow, orange, those are our colors. Yellow is candy's color. Yellow is candy's color. So good. Oh my god, she comes out in this glory, gorgeous ostrich feather feather gown with this beautiful construction um bodice. The gown has a high slit. Of course, it does. Um, and it has this sequin structured bodice. However, not not a huge fan of this look. There are multiple parts of this look that I don't like and I would change differently. I love the look, but like it kind of bugged me. There is this strap that goes up and like a halter neck that goes up and around her neck. And I'm almost positive it's to hold up the dress and hold up the bodice of the dress. I don't like it. I, I wish it was made out of the material that the actual bodice is made out of. And there were two straps, or there was another way structurally this can this dress can be held up because it's not the first time she's worn a strapless dress or strapless bodice. But I get because probably the weight of the ostrich and the skirt of the dress that this needed to be added. But I just wish it would have been handled differently. Also, where the skirt of the gown starts with the ostrich feather, I would have brought that high up on her waist. It's kind of like an awkward gap in between the course the sequence bodice and then it's like this weird band and then the the skirt of the dress the ostrich i would have a limit i would have done something something else something else in that middle it's just it kind of make it awkward and clunky but i love the look she's giving 1930s pinup um a 1930s pinup performer she's got these beautiful lacquered finger waves and a little feather um fascinator in her hair it's so cute it's a really good look there was there's the things about it that i would have changed differently if i was a designer that made that dress or if i was to make that dress okay listen last look right this is the this is the lip sync look this is the last look we see of candy muse right she comes around this corner girl 
she come around this corner looking like a high-end fashion version of the butler from the Adams family. She has this high structured, almost um, billowy sequence draped cape with these pointy structures, a high neck, this fringe bang ponytail situation. She's just all covered up head to toe in this silver sequence. Like you just see the silver sequence form drifting towards you and it's giving very much the monster the butler from uh the Adams family and I fucking love it it's absolutely amazing then the reveal when she starts performing and she takes it off it's this beautiful sequence um silver sequence same silver sequence body suit cat suit that has all of these cutouts various all over it and this matched material I absolutely love the cat suit but I I like the cat suit but I love the sequin cape jacket with the split lapel oh my god it's so good it's so good it's very high fashion i couldn't find a fashion reference from it but honestly some things don't need a fashion reference it's just good it's good it, it came from the person's head and i love that so stylers that is the breakdown of most of all the looks the Candy Muse wore on her seasons of rupaul drag race season 13 and rupaul drag race all stars season 8 as for my favorites, I will have to put, so I will have to put Legendary, Nat Gala, The Beat It as some of my favorites. Even the makeover challenge with her and Got Milk, ah, As The World Turns. So the As The World Turns, The Legendary, The Beat It, The Got Milk, those are some of my favorites. As, and oh, Snow Bunny. As far as bottoms. You're the winner, baby. I'm a winner, baby. Challenge the 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 stone design challenge where she has Monet exchange fabric. Uh, Miss fill in the blank. Okay, stylist. If you hear by the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. This took days of research, um, days of gathering all of my resources and the footage and the imagery. I really had a time getting this together, but I had a good time because I really felt fondly about this concept and this ideal and this topic. I would love to share more plus size drag queens with you guys. I already have a list of those that I want to give a go, and I already know which drag queen I have. Al I am going to start working on next. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you watch RuPaul Drag Race. If you do. What versions of the series of the franchise have you seen? Who is your favorite drag queen? What are some of your favorite drag looks? Do Have you seen any of the seasons that I mentioned? Do you know of Candy Muse? Let me know down below in the comment section. I hope you guys, again, once again, enjoy this video. I know I had a good time putting it together. I'm so very excited to see how it turns out. I'm so very excited to hear what you guys got to say. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you can like, comment, and subscribe, that would be beautiful. Welcome to all of the new stylers and beauties to the Full Sight channel. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you guys go because it's hot. And I've been recording for over an hour. Remember, you are loved and worthy to be loved. But always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.